What up my home brews? this is Ali back for the second part of my COD cinematic tutorial and originally I was going to start by showing you how to import the cinematic into Photoshop but what I'm actually going to do is uh, show you how to apply some simple shapes uh, so that your cinematic looks a little bit more interesting. So if you come and click on this cube here and uh, then you can pick any of these shapes you want. I like to use these torus rings uh, so I'll just apply one of these and then um, on any object um, you apply you can uh, have whatever material you want so I'm just going to apply the material that is on the text like so and then also with many of the shapes you're going to be able to uh, change their characteristics so um, uh, I'm going to for the torus ring I'm going to down the, the radius to about 180 and if if there is an option to change the segment count on any shape uh, always up it to around about 100 so it gives it a, a cleaner finish when you render so uh, pipe segments on 100 there we go and then the pipe radius I'll put down to about 35 right then what you can do is you can rotate your shape or um, whichever shape you've used around the text or position it in front or behind or whatever you want to do just to make it look a, lo a little bit more integrated into the cinematic um, and then you can just hit uh, this render button here to see what it's going to look like and yeah that looks pretty cool so um, you can apply spheres and cubes or whatever and uh, if you do apply these sort of shapes um, and you don't want them to sort of look like they're coming out of the ground, make sure that they're lifted above the plane so that there's a thin shadow underneath them so it looks more in the map and it's not sunk into the ground. Right, so once you've done this, hit render settings. Make sure you've set up your uh, settings how I showed you uh, at the beginning. So your output is on HDV, HDTV, 720.25. Your save is whatever you call the file and uh, format JPEG and your anti-aliasing is best. Then what you're going to want to do is hit effect down here and apply ambient occlusion, apply global illumination and apply depth of field. And uh, uh, these are just going to make the cinematic look even crisper and even cleaner. And so uh, you close that now and then you hit this render button here and this is going to take a couple of minutes so I'm going to cut the video and I will join you when it's finished. Okay guys, <clears throat> so you should now be at this stage where you've uh, finished the render so what you're going to want to do is uh, close Picture Viewer, minimize Cinema 4D for now, and open up Photoshop. Then hit File, Open, and then open up the, your render, wherever you've saved it. I've just saved mine as Tut1 on my desktop. So here we go. <clears throat> and the first thing I'm going to do is show you how to apply a Gaussian blur to the background so that the text and the character looks more focused in on. So um, what you're going to want to do is come over and hit Polygonal Lasso Tool here polygonal lasso tool and then you're going to want to click around everything that you want to be blurred out so um, for me I'm gonna start here click and then come over to the object click around it you just keep clicking to solidify the last line around the object and then uh, you can see where this is going so I'm gonna cut the video and then I'll show you uh, what it looks like when it's done Okay guys, I'm back and this is what it looks like when you have finished uh, selecting the area you want blurred with the polygonal lasso tool. And you'll notice that my screen looks a little bit different because I've zoomed it out a bit so you can see all of the Photoshop buttons at the top. Uh, right, so once you have selected around the shape, around the text, and then around the character if you have one in your cinematic, uh, make sure that you select up right to the edge and then click up to the top right corner to the top left corner and then back down to where you started so that you complete the selection and then you can apply an effect. So we're going to apply Gaussian Blur. So you come up to Filter at the top, hit Filter, Blur, Gaussian Blur. Then you'll notice that the background gets blurred and make sure that your radius is on 7, hit OK. And then you can come over here and select the um, Select tool and then just click anywhere on the screen and then that will disappear and you can see what it looks like which actually looks very good. And, but what you'll notice is that uh, there is a definite line between the blur and the focus. So what you can do is hit the color picker and select the color right next to the line. And then what you're going to want to do is hit the brush tool and select the brush 100 blur. Then with a few clicks of that brush you can just fade out the line and it, do, it doesn't matter if um, you can still see a little bit of the line because on YouTube you won't be able to see it. So that looks pretty good. 
And um, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to enhance the color of the character. And for this, we're going to use the same tool, the polygonal lasso tool. And uh, we're going to do what we did before. We're going to click around the character, like so. And um, select around the whole of him and uh, complete the selection. And then um, once you've done that, you can then uh, change the hue and up the brightness, etc. to make him look nicer. So uh, I'll um, cut the video and I will show you what it looks like when it's done. Okay guys, so you can see that I've now finished lasso tooling around my character and he's ready to be enhanced. So what I like to do is hit image, adjustments, brightness and contrast, and then up the brightness to 50 and the contrast to around about 60. Hit OK. And then go to image again, adjustments, uh, hue slash saturation. And then I like to give my character an orange tint. So we'll uh, move it over to around about minus 14, minus 15, something like that. And uh, then hit the select tool and hit the cinematic. And then the dotted lines will disappear. And you can see that the character looks a lot more focused in on, uh, added to the uh, blur of the Gaussian background. Uh, it looks really nice. So that's it for... Um, the, uh, this second part of the whole tutorial. Um, make sure you check out the final part, which will be out in a few days, and uh, we'll speak to you soon. Bye.